In 1901, Nikola Tesla secured a patent for what he termed the radiant energy receiver, a device capable of harvesting radiative energy from the atmosphere. It was not a passive antenna, as commonly misinterpreted today, but a coherent system with two distinct modes, static and dynamic. The static mode captured the dielectric potential between the elevated antenna and the ground, extracting the longitudinal tension from the dielectric field that pervades all space. The dynamic mode, by contrast, employed rapid interruption of, of circuit continuity using an electromagnetic actuator, essentially creating sharp nonlinearities to provoke dielectric inertia. At the dawn of the 20th century, the air was not saturated with man-made radio frequencies. Yet, Tesla's patent stated clearly, the ether was never void. Space was filled with radiant pressures and tension gradients that could be tapped with proper dielectric and magnetic geometry. This was not about waves in the modern sense, but rather the disturbance and manipulation of the ether's coherent structure. By the 1960s and 70s, as the radio industry matured, various Soviet-era engineers rediscovered this domain, though under different terminologies. With the proliferation of radio waves, they constructed energy harvesting circuits capable of extracting power from ambient radio emissions. Many of these designs bore uncanny resemblance. They constructed energy harvesting circuits capable of extracting power from ambient radio emissions. Many of these designs bore uncanny resemblance to Tesla's original 1901 architecture, though updated with modern components such as semiconductors and high speed switching transistors. One such design, an audio amplification circuit from the Soviet bloc, was modified to draw electrical energy solely from grounding and aerial reception, requiring no external power. The circuit exemplified a rudimentary free energy device. By grounding one terminal to zero volt potential and utilizing a high impedance input from an antenna or aluminum plate, it could amplify audio signals to a speaker without a conventional power source. The phenomenon cannot be adequately explained by textbook electrodynamics alone. The key lies not in the minor voltages harvested at the antenna, but in the resonant coupling of two coils, a carefully timed system of dielectric stress accumulation and magnetic field collapse. Through abrupt switching, a sharp transient impulse is created, stimulating reactive EMF. This is through abrupt switching, a sharp transient impulse is created, stimulating reactive EMF. This is not conventional induction, but a kind of dielectric rebound, a pulse-driven excitation in the ether medium. Russian researchers would later term this impulse technology. In essence, the system relies on the ever-present electric potential between ground and sky. Capacitive storage allows oscillations to build up, and resonance between coils acts as a charge pump, not through conservation of energy, but by exploiting dielectric hysteresis and longitudinal interactivity within the ether field. Where does this energy originate? Conventional science points to resonance as voltage amplification, but such a view is limited. In the etheric paradigm, what's truly at play is the reaction of the dielectric field to abrupt disturbances, what Eric Dollard calls the counterspace dynamic. As the dielectric field loses inertia and seeks equilibrium, it interacts elastically with the universe's total etheric volume. This is not electromagnetism in motion, but ether in tension. And from that tension, elastically with the universe's total etheric volume. This is not electromagnetism in motion, but ether in tension. And from that tension, free energy is born. Thank you for watching this video. To explore the full version with extended analysis, check the link in the video description. Check the link in the video description.